Welcome to another video. This problem was sent to me a while ago, but I never was able to figure out how to answer the question because I couldn't afford to spend so much time like I did today on this problem. And remember, this problem was one of many questions on one test that required maybe about two to three minutes for the candidate to be able to answer it. So, if you could answer it faster than I'm going to answer it, great for you, but I'm just going to go at my own pace and let's get into the video. So looking at the way this question was constructed, if I choose to start evaluating and getting fractions, because that was a, that's an option, I'm going to plug in one, and then I'm going to get some answer times this. The multiplication is the problem, because I could get this times this times this. But I knew that was not what they wanted me to do, because that was almost impossible because then you have to be evaluating different values of signs and multiplying them and taking the reciprocals and then adding. Uh, that's a problem. So I said, why is this argument so weird? And why is this argument so weird? What if I decide to work with these arguments? Because again, whenever you're multiplying trig functions, it is harder for you to deal with. It is better if you're adding them, especially if it comes to integration. So I thought, okay, there has to be a way for me to make this become a sum. So I focused on what we have here. So I said, let, so let's look at this. Let A be equal to pi over four plus, in fact, I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna write it as, k pi over 6 minus pi over 6. That's my a. And I'm going to say let b. So another thing that inspired me was that I saw the similarity between these two if I remove this parenthesis. So look, this is exactly this, except that this one has this negative pi over 6. So I said, what happens? If I add these two together, if you add these two together, well, this is just gonna double and no nice number shows up. But if you subtract one from the other, you're gonna get just pi over six if you subtract a from b. But if you subtract b from a, you're gonna get negative pi over six. And in order to avoid the negative, let's subtract a from b. So from here, we can see that b minus a is basically pi over six. Okay, now what will that help me achieve? Well, if I want to split this, this into a sum or a difference, I will have to replace this one with something that allows me to do that. So to replace this one, I have to replace this with sine 90 degrees but this is not 90 degrees because I could have written this, if this was pi over two, that would be perfect. I'll just write it as sine pi over two, but it is pi over six. But I know that the sine of pi over six is one half. That sine pi over six equals one half. So I know that if I want this to be one, if I multiply this by two, I multiply this by two. So I can say two times sine, remember that pi over six is b minus a, two sine b minus a is equal to one. That's what I get. Pi over six is my b minus a, and that's it. So I can go back here and say that this sum is the sum from k equals one to 13 of, instead of writing one, I'm going to be writing two sine b minus a, two sine b minus a. Why am I writing this? Because I need to have two expressions that I can add together, because it's easier to do trig that way than by multiplication, especially if it's in the denominator. So now, 
what I have here is going to be sine A times sine B. Ooh. And maybe I can squeeze this in here. This is now the sum from K equals 1 to 13 of, guess what? The denominator is sine A, sine B, but the numerator, what is sine B minus A from what we've learned in trade class? It is sine B cos A minus cos B sine A. That's what we're going to write here. Sine B. Oh, there's a 2. You know what? I'm going to bring this 2 to the back here. Okay. Equals 2 times. You can always bring the constant behind the summation. Sine B cos A minus cos A sine B. That's it. Now, I can split this into 2 so that what I have will be equal to the sum from k equals 1 to 13 of, if I split this, this goes with this, I have sine b cos a over sine a sine b, the sine b cancels sine b, what I have left is cosine a over sine a. Cosine over sine is cotangent. I wanted to say tangent. No, it's cotangent. So it would be, oh, it's split. I don't really need anything. It's just cotangent cotangent of A minus, if I do the same split here, sine B cancels sine B. Wait, what is canceled here? Sine B cos A, sine B cancels sine B. Oh, this is cos B. Hey, you do the first one first, cos B sine A. <laughs> okay, I was able to catch that. So, Cos sine A cancels sine A, so you have cos B over sine B, which would be cotangent B minus cotangent B. There's a 2 here. Hey, don't forget the 2. This is it. So all we have to compute and get our answer is find cotangent A, find cotangent B for each of the values of K. Well, don't forget what our A is. A is all of this. You know what? I may have to rewrite this A because this doesn't look easy to compute. So let's still work on it. 2 times the sum from k equals 1 to 13 of cotangent. What will be the argument? Let me show you. Minus cotangent of B. Now, let me simplify this. I want to give all of this the same square root, so I'm going to make everything over 12, over 12, over 12. So this would be 3 pi over 12. So let's say A will now be equal to 3 pi over 12, 3 pi over 12. This is going to be plus 2k pi over 12. This is going to be minus 2 pi over 12. Because all the denominators are the same, Everything is over 12. What's going to be on top? I'm going to add this to this. Is this minus? No, it's plus. Oh, it's minus. Ooh, it's minus. So I'm going to have 2k pi plus pi, right? Yeah, 2k pi plus pi. So this is going to be 2k pi plus pi. Well, this is going to be equal to 2k pi plus pi over 12, which is going to be, take out pi, it's going to be 2k plus 1, 2k plus 1 pi. Nice. Now we do the same thing here. b is going to be 3 pi over 12 plus 2k pi over 12. So what we have is going to be, boom, <laughs> there's nothing. I have a denominator of 12, and on top I have 2k plus 3 pi, 2k plus 3 pi. Okay, 
So now all I have to do is start plugging in k equals 1, k equals, but I can already see that this is a bunch of odd number pi's. Everything is pi over 12, pi over 12. This would be odd numbers. These are odd numbers. It's just that this guy is ahead by 2. Look. Do you see it? When k is 1, this is going to be 3. This is going to be 5. And this has a negative. So when this will always be positive, this will always be negative. So this guy is playing catch up. It will be going and canceling what's in front. Canceling, canceling. But it will not be able to cancel everything. So this is like a telescoping series. So when I was doing my paperwork, what I did was I made a table for these two quantities. So what I did was I said, when we plug in k equals 1 from here, when k equals 1, which is the first number, this is going to be 3 pi over 12, right? 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. 3 pi over 12 is pi over 4. So it's going to be cotangent of pi over 4 minus, if you plug in 1 here, you're going to get 5 pi over 12. This is going to be 3. That's 7 pi over 12. We have cotangent of 7 pi over 12 minus cotangent, plug in 3 here, you're going to get 9 pi over 12. So we have 9 pi over 12. So you notice that as we continue, this will keep going from 5, 7, 9, 11. It's just an arithmetic series. This one also will be going from 3, 5, 7, 9. So they will always cancel. This will be canceled by this. This will be canceled by this. This will be canceled by this, tap, 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 tap. The guy here is going to cancel the guy here. So the only guy left will be when you plug in 13 into this function. So this is going to be 2 times 13 plus 3, which is 26, plus 3, which is 29. So this is going to be minus cotangent of 29 pi over 12. But you can't write 29 pi over 12 because 29 pi over 12 is, look, 29 pi over 12 is 24 pi over 12. You have already gone through a complete revolution because this is going to be 2 pi, right? So 29 pi over 12 is 24 pi over 12 plus 5 pi over 12. But once you get here, you start again. You're going around, you start again. You go around, you start again. So here, what you have is 5 pi over 12 is the... Yeah, that's it. That's the angle. So we're not going to write this. We're going to say, okay, this goes here. It's going to be 2 times the cotangent of pi over 4, because now we've added all of these, we've done all the sum, okay, minus cotangent of 5 pi over 12. Those are the two values that you need. Well, we know the cotangent of pi over 4. Remember, cotangent is 1 over tangent. 1 over 10 pi over 4 is 1 over 1, which is 1. So our answer is actually 2 times 1 minus... This was where I started questioning my answer, because... How did they expect me to find 5 pi over 12? I couldn't figure it out until I changed it to degrees, and I said, hey, 5 pi over 12 is 75 degrees. I know how to find 75 degrees. Okay, let's do it here. Look, 75 this is 75 degrees, okay? Just change pi to 180 degrees, and you notice that to be 75 degrees. Okay, how do I find angle 75 degrees? Well, it is angle 30 plus angle 45. So I said cotangent of 75 degrees is cotangent 30 plus 45. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the formula for the angle sum formula for cotangent, which is the product of the angles, the product of the cotangent minus one over the sum of the cotangents. Okay, more like the flipped version of the tangent. So this is going to be equal to cotangent 30 times cotangent 45 minus 1 divided by cotangent 30 plus cotangent 45. Okay, what is cotangent 30? It is a reciprocal of tan 30. Tan 30 is 1 over rad 3, so cot 30 has to be rad 3. So this is rad 3 multiplied by, this is 1. That's the same answer we got here, 1. That's 45 degrees. Okay, hey, by the way, this is in degrees. <laughs> it was easier for me to understand. That's why I changed it from radians to degrees. Okay, and minus 1 divided by, this is going to be rad 3 plus 1. Oh, so what we have is, this is times, by the way. So this is rad 3 minus 1 over rad 3 plus 1. Okay, if I rationalize, whenever you multiply these two, you're going to get 3 minus 2 rad 3 plus 1 over the square of this is 3, the square of 1 is 1. So here we go. 3 plus 1 is 4 minus 2 rad 3 divided by 2. So this gives me 2 minus rad 3, 2 minus rad Three. That's my answer. So when I come here, I am subtracting this. So this is minus 2 plus rad 3. Okay, I have distributed the negative into this so that my final answer is going to be 1 minus 2 is minus 1. So it's rad 3 minus 1 multiplied by 2. So that is 2 times rad 3 minus 1. And I think this was the option. C for the problem. I know you could do it in five seconds, but I couldn't. This was how long it took me. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.